It is Sunday, so that means it is Attack on Titan time. As always, guys, if you enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment, add, subscribe. Let's crack on. Last week's episode was crazy. We left off with Aaron and Reiner facing off in combat. It seems like Reiner and Marley are getting the upper hand on Aaron. The episode begins with a recap from the scout team prisoners from episode one. Armin believes Aaron is acting of his own free will and that he's actually going to save them since Armin believes the founding titan's power is ultimately Aaron's to use. After some protesting in episode one, it seems Connie and the other scout team members begrudgingly agree to help Aaron because if they don't, well, Connie's never going to get to punch him in the face. <laughs> Kasa again questions Armin about why Aaron would say he hates her and why he would push his friends away from him. Armin seems to know more than he's leading on here. We get a flash of a reference to season 3, and Aaron's famous line, If we kill everyone over there, will we finally be free? Manga readers, if you know, you know. Armin also gives us some evidence for his claim in the first episode that Aaron was lying about the accurance being controlled, by saying he and Aaron have known about Mikasa's headaches for some time. It's likely he used this in his lie to make it seem like it was more true than it was. Flashback to where we left Aaron and Reiner engaged in battle, Last time, Reiner had thrust one of the hardened spikes into Aaron's chest. Aaron, with a flash, blows Reiner away with a surge of Warhammer Titan spikes. Reiner gets back and manages to tackle Aaron to the ground after an attack from Galliard. Reiner seems to be spiraling through a series of emotions here, but has finally come to the acceptance that him and Aaron are not the same. At least the same as he once thought they were. He goes in to bite him, and in easily one of the most badass scenes in this episode, Aaron shows us just how OP his combination of Titan abilities are as he attempts to rip the Armor Titan's jaw off. This was metal as fuck, but they're really going to rename the Armor Titan after this, as Aaron almost completely rips his jaws by himself, as boom, a rock comes out of nowhere, knocking the Armor Titan away from Aaron. Zeke has finally arrived in his Beast Titan form and looks to rain terror down from the walls. The brothers have finally come face to face that they had planned. We can see as Aaron has taken a ton of damage and used up a lot of his energy fending off the other titans as he slowly hobbles his way through the city towards Zeke. This set up a really cool dynamic for the rest of this episode as we see Aaron desperately trying to make his way to Zeke while the Marley army and the titans try to stop him. It creates for a really cool sense of suspect as Aaron stumbles his way and destruction just rains down around him. The survey team is freed, and the rest of the captured soldiers and those who drank the wine containing Zeke's spinal fluid all group together. Pixis assembles them and orders them it's time to protect their home. He splits the troops and takes all those who drank Zeke's wine with him. It seems Pixis has some sort of plan up his sleeve. We get this scene with Mikasa where she decides to go into battle without her scarf, the one that Aaron gave her when they were children. This is a big deal for Mikasa. Her character's been so linked to Aaron since the beginning, it makes sense why she might be having some existential crisis after his rejection. Zeke rains down destruction on the Marley forces from the wall. We get this awesome scene of Yelena looking crazy as the Marley airships tumble on the ground around her. Oh yeah, and we get this amazing meme of a scene that Armin tells his scout team allies they must help bring Aaron and Zeke together. I can't with her face, man. This actually made me laugh so hard when I watched it. Colt and Gabby make their way through the city. Colt's desperate to rescue his little brother Falco. He carries with him an anti-Titan gun, which we saw in the last episode. The soldiers who drank Zeke's spinal fluid enter into the city, Falco and Niall among them. They make contact with Gabby and Colt deep behind enemy lines, and it looks like there's some kind of standoff about to take place. Amongst all the fighting here, though, we get this scene that reminds us that just how human both sides of this conflict are, and how AOT as a story is one of anti-violence and war. Go check out our Attack on Titan is just the Game of Thrones of anime video to learn more about how Attack on Titan is an anti-war story. Niall says he's going to tie Falco up in a house, which is really just an excuse so he can take him to where Gabby and Colt are hiding. He then hands Falco over to them, letting him go free. We get some real character development here from Gabby, who stops Colt from shooting and killing Niall. An insane series of events, the Brawls family just seems to walk by where Gabby's and the others are hiding here, coincidentally as Mr. Brawls is talking about how he hopes Falco and Gabby are safe. Gabby finally realizes the truth in, Guy in Reiner's words from before. On the island, there are no devils, just people, like them, and this entire conflict is pointless. Falco admits to Gabby and his brother that he was tricked by Aaron into mailing letters to his allies, and thus he's partially responsible for the death of their friends Udo and Zofia. Also in a move out of left field, Falco tells Gabby he loves her, which was hinted at earlier on in Season 4, and that he doesn't want Gabby to inherit the Titan so they can get married and live together for a long time. He wants Gabby just to have a happy life. He's telling them this all because 
well, he drank Zeke's final fluid, and he might turn into a Titan at any minute. Colt, however, believes if Zeke knows this, he might not scream and turn one of his favorite people, Falco, into a Titan. Yeah, I think that sounds like a little wishful thinking there, Colt. The Aegirists perform a surprise flank on the Cart Titan and her soldiers. They tried to bait us here, but we've been watching Attack on Titan for long enough. You can't pull one over on us. Peek has left her Titan skeleton form, baiting the Jaegerists to think they had killed her, when in fact she had reverted her form and her allies were hidden within the bones, unleashing a surprise attack. The general aims the anti-Titan gun on the corpse's back, fires, blowing away part of Zeke's soldier shoulder. Zeke plummets from the wall into the ground below as Aaron slowly makes his way to his brother. The episode ends with Colt, Gabby, and Falco running towards Zeke, desperate to stop him from screaming, leaving it on a cliffhanger. Go figure. This episode was intense, though, and had me on the edge of my seat. It seems like the stakes are just getting ramped higher and higher as we go here. Once again, they leave us on the seat of our chair. Will Aaron get to Zeke? Will Reiner stop him? Will Zeke scream, turning Falco and the others into Titans? Guess we'll have to wait until next week to find out. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. Go check out some of our other Attack on Titan videos, like last week's Attack on Titan episode breakdown, as well as why Attack on Titan is a story about anti-violence and anti-war, kind of like Game of Thrones. As always, guys, thank you for watching my videos. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace, love. Adu.